Hey everyone, and welcome back to the X-Ring. On today's episode, what I'm going to do is review another bipod by a company called Warn, W-A-R-N-E. It is the Warn Skyline Precision Bipod. It is very sturdy looking, okay? It feels it too, 16 and a half ounces. So over a pound, you know, comparing it to things like the Atlas or the Thunder Beast, these are all great bipods, but these come in significantly lower in weight uh, two or three ounces lower than what this comes in at, the Skyline. Uh, just for an example, here's a BT-46, very robust bipod, but compare it to the legs on the diameter to that worn. This still uses 6061 and 7075 T6 aluminum. It also has a lot of steel components on it. So let's go ahead and start at the top and work our way down. One of the first things you're going to notice is it does have a 1913 slash Picatinny mount. So if you have a quad rail or anything like that, you can clip right to it. This is not an ADM. Unlike the other two, this is marked with the Warren and the Warren logo. And it also has this ingenious little mechanism here that locks it in place. And the only way to open this is to push down on that and then to open. Now they do offer this exact same bipod with an Arca Swiss attachment on the top. The price of that one is $399, whereas if you look at this, this is going to be $379. Now I did find these on Optics Planet uh, just a few hours ago, and it was $322.99. So price point is going to be right there with the Atlas, but a little less than the Thunder Beast. However, MSRP on this is the same as the Thunder Beast. So let's take a look at it. So we're doing this from the shooter side. I'm not going to attach this to a rifle because apparently YouTube has a problem with me doing that with bipods and they demonetize the other uh, video that I did. So I'm not going to hook it up to a rifle. This roll wheel right here controls the tension on the hip socket here. You guys see that ball and socket? So if I loosen this, this is going to allow me to cant. I believe it's about 20 degrees, but I can also pan. Okay, I think this is about 40 degrees. Once I get it set, I can just pull this, tighten it, and then now she's not moving. She is solid. You're not going to get any movement out of it. One of the things I do like about the worn legs are how many adjustments. Kind of like the Atlas, you have this switch here. You can push down on it, and that will allow you to go all the way to wherever you need to go, and you release it. So you've got 0, you have 45, you have 90, 135, and 180. So one thing that it definitely has an advantage over the Thunder Beast in that the Thunder Beast only does 0, 45, and 90 and will not go in the other direction. So I do like that about it. As far as the legs, there is no quick deploy. And what I mean by that is you see these levers? If I press on it, nothing happens. Okay, this does something else. So it's unlike the Thunder Beast where I can just press it or like a Harris where I get a quick deploy. On this, you can quickly extend it by pulling on it. And what these levers do is if you press on it straight in, that will allow you to retract it one step at a time. So it is rather quick in getting it to the right height because you're almost just ratcheting it. What I don't like about it is the fact that they have this quick release. And it, at least they thought about the quick release, but you can kind of see how these kind of move on an angle. You guys will see these slots here. Well, they've designed it so you can kind of press down and push forwards and it will quickly retract. The problem is ergonomically, it doesn't always work. Okay, let's try it again. We push down and go forwards. See, no, there it goes. But it takes a long time to get used to that and you don't get it every time. Let's try it. Okay, can't even do it. Trying to do it now. Got one. Can't get the other. So you're not going to quickly retract it. Not a big deal, not a deal breaker. But all in all, very, very solid bipod. The feet here, they are kind of grayish in color, unlike the other ones that are black. One of the things that kind of stood out, though, that I didn't really care for is uh, it looks like a, a zinc-type screw here. Just doesn't seem like the quality of the other ones. That's one thing. They are marked with the Warren logo on the feet itself. And you do have extensions available. If you guys look at that, these are the extensions. And it's kind of threaded on this side. And so basically I would just take that screw, put it in. But, you know, anytime I've got little rubber gaskets or things like that, this seems, seems like they could have put a little more effort into it, but it's not bad. At least they offer the extensions and the extensions are cheaper than let's say the Thunder Beast. Uh, you know, the Thunder Beast run at about $50 for the extensions. These are about $39. Now the feet, 
are a little more expensive. If you get the claw feet for the uh, worn, they're going to run you about $80, $89 or so. You might be able to get them a little cheaper, but either way, it's about $30 higher than the Atlas or the Thunder Beast. So that's how that works. Now, there's something else I want to add to this, and I'm going to bring the Thunder Beast and the Atlas and the worn back into this because this is something that I failed to mention in the other bipod. So let me change the camera angle. Bear with me. All right, so one of the things that I noticed is in shooting these, now, like I said, I'm not going to mount it to a rifle because I don't want the, uh, this video to get demonetized, but when you mount this to a rifle, these rubber feet, these Atlas, they actually bounce. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to drop it fairly. You see that? They kind of bounce. And when you shoot it and you have a lot of recoil, you'll see that because it's gonna take a second. Now, on the worn, same thing, here we go. See that? And I'm dropping it from maybe an inch and a half or so. But I do remember reading that Thunder Beast designed these feet, they're a lot harder in composition, so that you don't get that. We'll do the same thing. See that? It actually falls and just sticks. It does not jump up. Man, I don't wanna break my watch. Um, but yeah, no hop. So that's something that I forgot to mention on the Thunder Beast. I did want to point that out, give them a kudos on that. I know this is about the worn, but uh, this feet composition or the foot composition of the bipods do make a difference. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and the review of the worn Skyline bipod. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.